Hey, what's up guys? Quicker Tom here with another scripting tutorial video. Today we're going to be talking about metatables. And let's just get started. If we go to the creator hub documentation and uh, we just check it out, we can do some reading. But um, let's say we got this regular table here list. Uh, we can turn the meta table or turn our table into a meta table uh, by either taking our table and calling set meta table on the define table. Or we can uh, get this meta table here, which is X, uh, and then set it as this table. We can define it inside the set meta table function. So it really does the same thing uh, whether you do it here, uh, if you pass by reference, or if you just return a meta table. So what a meta table does is it adds a set of these things called meta methods. And these are like hidden functions stored inside the table, and they get called when certain actions that you do on normal objects uh, occur. So for the index event, um, for the index function, this basically gets called whenever you um, use the dot operator or the square brackets on a table, whenever you index it and you wanna get a property of the table or a method or something like that, it calls this index function. And so what we can do is we can actually pass in another table as the uh, index function here. And so basically what it'll do is that when we index the table, instead of uh, looking at the table that we're trying to index, like the physical table, in this case, if it's X, uh, it'll index the table that we define. So we'll come back and look at that in a second. But there's all of these different meta methods that we can use, addition, subtraction, um, well, length here, all this stuff, iteration, what happens when we iterate over the table. So with meta tables, we can take data and we can add these hidden operations to it that we might do with normal data. Like if you add two plus two, the meta method for add is just gonna take in two and the other two and it's gonna give you a result of four, right? It's not that deep because it's just addition. But with our meta tables, we can add uh, custom behavior that could be really powerful. So let's jump into studio and look at some examples. Okay, so we're here in studio and I'm just gonna make a new module script and um, I thinking for our meta table let's make um, let's make a house and then what we'll do is we'll set the index of house to itself and something else I like to do is I like to set the, a class name and this is something that all Roblox objects have so um, right here you can see it I'm selected on this script and the class name for a script is script and so whenever we're cr I'm creating custom classes with meta tables, uh, I like to add this class name property just, um, and it helps out too when you're adding various meta methods that might interact with different types of classes. So something I want to do is we'll create a constructor for the house, which will just be a new house. And then we'll do something like uh, celebrate Christmas. Houses love to celebrate Christmas. Okay, so I wrote some simple and goofy methods here. So we can move people in, we can move people out, and we can celebrate Christmas. And we use this uh, private property, and I like to denote private properties with this underscore beforehand, just so you know um, what only the class should be interacting with. And then this residence here is how many people the house has initially. Let's put this into play here. All right, so in this example here, we got my place, which is where I live. Uh, it's just me. And then uh, maybe I celebrate Christmas alone. But then let's say the rest of my family moves in and uh, we celebrate Christmas together. So we should see one people celebrating Christmas and then four people celebrating Christmas. Or five people, sorry, yeah. Can't do math in my head. So how this works basically is we have this my place function uh, or this my place, which is this uh, meta table that we get from our constructor here. So it sets the meta table sets so this table here. So we'll call this table T. We'll call this the original table. So the original table contains underscore residence, right? And it's meta table is house. So what we're getting here is my place is really the original table, right? But it's meta table is house. So when we call my place colon celebrate Christmas, um, celebrate Christmas isn't a method of my place. And so we're indexing my place really is what we're doing here when we're when we're calling uh, celebrate Christmas. So um, my place does not have the original table. It only has underscore residence in it. 
it does not have celebrate Christmas in it. So what it does is it goes into house because we set the meta table to house. It goes into house and it looks at the index of house, which is house, right? So it indexes itself. And then one of the indexes for house is celebrate Christmas. And when we use the colon operator, that's the same exact thing as if we were to say, uh, Monica. This is the same behavior here, right? So if we use the colon, uh, we don't have to pass in self in the arguments, but when we use the dot, we do. So col uh, the colon implicitly passes self as the first argument. And say we had some list of arguments here, this is how it would be, because self is always going to be the first one for colon. So these, these would pass in the same exact arguments. So it indexes celebrate Christmas, and because self automatically gets passed in, we use self here, and that references the original table, right? This my place, which is the original table. When we're saying self, that's what it's referencing, is this original table. So we're using this underscore residence from the original table, and we're doing a print statement. And you can even see that we can modify the original table from within inside uh, a function here. So with move in and move out, you can see that we take this value of self that residence that's in the original table, right? And we're adding people. And this convention here is just saying that if we say move in with, um, like, let's say we say my place move in and we don't pass any in any arguments. This is me defining it here or typing it. You can check out my previous video on typing if you want to learn more about that. But with the question mark, that means that we can pass in a nil and it has a behavior for that, or at least that's the idea we want to demonstrate. So here we say people, or if it's nil, it'll uh, activate this or statement basically so it's nil or one and so this will uh, evaluate to one so it'll just add one person if we don't pass in a number of people um, anyway I got on a tangent there but basically this underscore resonance is when we have it in here we're talking about this original table okay let's look at some other meta methods and see what we want to add so uh, right off the bat I just want to add two string so um, with these meta methods, what we have to do is I'm going to add them up here above our constructor. So what happens is if we try and use house it as a string, it should repur return however many people are in the house, person house. So if we print my place, if we print two string my place, uh, it should print one person house before we move somebody in to celebrate Christmas. So yeah, see one person house. That's what we get right there. And uh, this can return a string. Um, and usually the two string behavior, you're going to want a string, but you could put in maybe inside of here, you want to print something as well. You can do that. But at the end of the day, it should return a string because people are going to expect that uh, using a two string is going to give you a string. Let's do another one. All right. So what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the plus and minus operators. And what I'm thinking is what if we could make it so that we don't have to call move in and we could just do house plus three and that'll move in three people. So... Let's do house dot, what is it again? At. So then uh, what I want to do is we'll say, we'll take my house and we'll take out these move-ins and we'll say my place and then we'll do my place plus equals one. And then my place plus equals four. And then Hopefully what this should do, and yeah, we're going to have to do plus equals because we're going to have to redefine my place. So hopefully what this should do is we should, uh-oh, we had an error. Attempt to index nil with celebrate Christmas. Oh, we have to go back in here and we have to... There we go. So it's a one-person house. Uh, then we add a person, and then it's a uh, two people are going to celebrate Christmas. Then we add four people, and it's going to be six people celebrating Christmas. So uh, let's empty out the house, and then we will print how many people are inside once Christmas is over. We should see it's one person because we removed five people. Okay, so that was a pretty quick tutorial talking about uh, meta tables and these methods in here. And if you go on the documentation and you look at it yourself, there's so many other methods you could use in here. And I could think of so many other ways 
that you could use this to your advantage and maybe you have an item class for example and if instead of adding item instead of using a, a method here with a colon you just want to say item plus equals two if you want to add two rocks to your item stack right uh, it could be much simpler but uh, while I think these methods are very powerful, I think you could get very confused when writing code. So that's why I think that using these colon methods is probably better than using uh, the meta methods, especially since uh, you're not entirely sure what behavior is defined in here, uh, and especially for another programmer as well, if they're looking over your code. If you use this colon operator, and if you're verbose, like I like to be very verbose, and I've talked about this many times before, uh, if you're verbose, then people can understand what you wrote. So my place plus equals one, are you adding another place? Are you adding a room? Are you adding a person, right? You'd have to read this to understand the behavior, whereas move in makes it clear, okay, we're adding a person to the house, right? All right, well, thank you for watching, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. See ya.